Presser is currently the owner of U.S. Bottlers Company in Charlotte, North Carolina, and he is going to show us lots of great work that he's been doing and talk to us about that and how Guilford played a role. So please welcome Tom Risser. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to have a video kind of running behind me, so to keep me in pace with that, I'm going to work a little bit off of some notes and rather than kind of freewheel it. Basically, about uh, six weeks ago, somebody sent me an email and asked me if I'd be willing to come out here and talk for 10 to 12 minutes. And my wife said, there's no way you can do that. <laughs> and what she meant was stay within that 10 to 12 minutes. So I will do my best to try to cease and desist when that buzzer goes off. Um, so quickly, a little background. My name is Tom Risser. I was a graduate of Guilford in 1985 with a degree in math and economics. And then I decided to avoid going to work full time, so I went to NC State after that for a degree in electrical engineering. Finished that in 1987. And then I figured to make a, another smart move, I would ask, I would propose, I guess, to my best friend, also a graduate of Guilford College, 1985, Daisy, and she accepted. So fast forward to 26 years later, and our daughter is now a sophomore here at Guilford College. And our son on the right end there, you could try to recruit because he is a senior in high school right now. Between, and a lot of these pictures, by the way, are from the yearbook of 1985, which I was the editor of, so I, I believe I have copyright control over these photographs, so I'm throwing them up here. And I noticed that book was not available back there, so maybe it was popular, hopefully. Um, but anyway, between the time that I rolled here and today, as a photographer, I kind of think that my life has come into focus, or maybe it's better to say there's a clearer focus that has, has engaged my life. And I believe Guilford has influenced my method of thinking and opened my mind to pursue and embrace the efforts that I now pursue. So my goal in this reflection was really to kind of emphasize some of that influence in my journey and to inspire people to follow a path that really isn't a straight line. Um, why walk a straight line? I find curvy lines are a lot more interesting and hopefully you'll see some images of that. Uh, I noticed they could say in this discussion we could discuss charting the liberal arts in a non-linear fashion and I would say if you know me non-linear movement is the only way I travel. If you don't know me I'd be willing to say that basically I get bored with linear movement. Straight lines don't skate well, they don't surf well. Others would probably say things like, well, you're high energy, and I would clearly point out that is the different definition than high maintenance. I do maintain a high clock cycle. I'd say I'm an engineer with an artist's tendency and passion. I'm an artist with an engineer's logistics. I'm a businessman with no patience for politics. Anybody recognize that? I'm a father who is sometimes a preacher, I grant you that. I'm a husband that acts the child, and I will admit to being a 51-year-old skateboarder. And that's just who I am, and you know what? I'm okay with that now anyway. As a student at Guilford, I was a kid, a kid trying to find my way, and now I'm still a kid, but I think I'm a kid who found his way. And I trace a lot of that to attending Guilford College. I engaged in the available opportunities, and I always thought Guilford was what you made of it. What you took advantage of here could direct what was solidified later. Not everybody took advantage of it. I think I did. I was immersed in engineering programs at NC State and the full liberal arts dose of Guilford College. And they both have value in my journey, but really only Guilford expanded my field of vision. If I look at what I do today and the way I do it today, I trace much of that to finding a spark during my time at Guilford. So what do I do? And I hesitate sometimes to answer that question because I think depending on how I answer that question influences what you might think in your head. Um, is it in terms of a career or a weekend hobby that got out of hand? Or in terms of an outlet or what pays the bills or a legacy of a family? I often avoid a linear connection or my family might say you avoid a straight answer. Uh, mostly what I do is I make stuff. I like to make examples of those stuff pieces here in the, in the images. You'll see a lot of it is tangible work. It has at its root the power to inspire. I make abstract and figurative contemporary sculpture. I design and build packaging machines. If you buy Gatorade, for example, I might have made the machine that put the Gatorade in the bottle. I build concrete and metal skateboard parks. I write and make books. I 
create the literature at work, I shoot and edit films. I run my own company with 75 employees, and basically I'm all over the map. I don't have a business card that seems to have a single title on it. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Now anyway, I think the work that you'll see up on the screen has a common theme, and it's basically a, a product of a passion for work, both noun and verb, and a belief that all of it is important. This philosophy extends into every day, you know, in and out of the office. Um, it's germinated from both my upbringing with my family, certainly, but also, I believe, strongly influenced by Guilford. When I graduated from Guilford, you know, I had been down a lot of roads. I was thinking about them. I was in the radio station, the newspaper, old print, the uh, yearbook, of course. We were involved in classes with religion, philosophy, physics. I took a class in sign language, which I really wish I, I knew right now. Um, I was a, a double major, and I took one class in basic drawing. These broad experiences impacted my confidence and my openness to explore different worlds. And so a lot of people come up to me and say, why do you do this? And it, it kind of makes me wonder about that question. The answer to the why, the answer to the how. I wonder, could the answer help our kids maybe find their way to fulfilling a destination or finding the right journey? The often argued point, you know, is going to be, is it in your nature or your nurture? In my way of thinking, is it the cause behind the effect? Is any project that I pursue inspired by some inquisitive spark? Maybe it's forged from higher education. Maybe Guilford's to blame for all of this stuff. Um, if I look back at graduation from this perspective, I try to find signs or clues along the trail. Most of my signs are big, hunky metal things. Um, they speak of their birth from the scrap to sculpture and they have a story to tell. The materials often will sprout from a design at work that was unusable for some reason. Um, you know, I might have invented it myself and then I spent the weekend morphing it into some other secondary life that it wasn't really originally planned for, but it ended up being suited for it. Um, you know, it sort of reminds me of my path, maybe your path. I studied in that traditional straight line arc of the engineering student, but I veered off that straight line and I diverted into this exploration of art. Uh, I got far from the calipers and the calculators, well, on weekends anyway, and, and you know, I'm okay with that. Who you truly are, who you want to become, it sometimes will fly right in the face of what you were trained for. Choosing a direction in life is a lot harder than that freshman major you're supposed to select. It took me about 35 years old before I figured out what I really wanted to do. And then I embraced that approach, and I've maintained it going forward. It took me that long, really, to figure out it was going to be okay. I think coming to this small liberal arts college paved me for what I would become, not as much through training a discipline, but by encouraging this attitude, nurturing a soul. And if I look at the difference in my day job and sculpture, for example, I see on the surface the difference between NC State and Guilford College. But what happened over time, I think, is that this weekend hobby sort of morphed and merged and my engineering work week and my weekend hobby were one. And it influenced my artistic projects, it influenced my engineering projects, and my brain's left side embraced my right side. And then there became a balance, a balance which I was comfortable with. You couple that with the attitude that it's going to be okay, and it allows you to enrich your life. So I sort of pursued the best possible version of what I wanted and what I could achieve. And so the answer became to the why, well, why not? Or the answer to the how was really sort of who cares, you know? Questions for answers that don't really need answers. And that's kind of my attitude about it. I think Guilford provides a balance, a balance for what's on the other side of the beam. And it does it in a lot of ways, and it does it differently for different people. For me, it was giving me perspective. I saw the mixture of science and art at Guilford. I was a math major, but I took my only art class here. Um, I found that it changed my perspective on what I could draw, but really what I could see. And then working in the yearbook, the newspapers, that created some skill sets, but it also created friendships that you took with you. And they stayed with me long beyond these wooded surroundings. And I had to go out into that so-called real world. And they stayed with me in that way of confidence. So when you have a diploma from Guilford, it allows you to enter the next step in life with sort of a self-belief and a confidence, and, and hopefully not an arrogance. But with each step, you understand the possibilities better than if you didn't have Guilford in your climb. 
And so when I started talking about climbing and upwards and movement, I, I kind of create this more linear uh, view than I necessarily want to. It's sort of like climbing a ladder. So I don't want to leave you with that sculptural image of just a ladder emphasis. And I rather prefer something like one of the Guilford symbols and basically the tree, which is a good jumping off point, although I should have said branching off point. Um, so when I'm discussing nature versus nurture, I think in my case, my nurture is from and in nature. And so I'm going to finish up by talking about two projects that I'm working on right now. Uh, the first of these is a place we've got in South Carolina. It's on 80 acres. We got about five years ago. And we call it Heartseed Gardens. And what it is, it's named that way. I think we came up with that because it's a place to sow joy. And it's a place to nurture creativity in nature. You know, it's a blank canvas, and every artist wants a big old blank canvas to go crazy in. I call it the sculpture retirement community. Um, basically, it's the artist inside drawn to the outside. So our hope someday is it's going to be a park, you know, where you can preserve the land beyond the growth and the overdevelopment that's going crazy around. And on that property, I can basically do anything I want, and nobody comes in and tells you you can't. And then you can leave it for the next generation to be inspired by. So I've got maybe 20, 25 sculptures down there right now. And I've also been working on what is, in essence, a 13,000 square foot concrete crazy skateboard park that took me two years to build. So you're definitely invited if I got any potential skaters, rollerbladers, bikers, get your helmet and come on down. Uh, we were down there yesterday morning. Um, it's a wonderful place to build really big crazy stuff. Speaking of big crazy stuff, the other project is something I've been working on for a couple years. I call it growth cycle, or, or GC for short, and I realize, hey, by the way, GC stands for Guilford College, because it's my hope that maybe this might become a gift to the college, it's, if we can find a home for it. It's basically inspired by the symbol of the tree. It's a, a huge trunk branching into four main branches as college is broken into four years as well as four seasons. The trunk is surrounded by a large circular bench, so it's, it's an interactive piece that students could enjoy. Um, on that bench are the core values cut into each of the segments. The surface of the trunk is textured with symbols, welds, recycled materials, hidden critters. Um, things that you can't see right away and you have to really take some time to look at them. I think it emphasizes the growth of the student over time, the educational metaphors there, the nurturing and raising of achievement, and diversity. I'm I was thinking about putting leaves on here, but never the same leaves from one particular type of tree because we don't have that here. So that may confuse some people, but I might have fun with it. I'm hoping to finish this thing up in um, 2015. It's just one of those things that I don't know where to stop. Like I, I even started messing around last Saturday with a squirrel because I was thinking you Guilford's into squirrels, right? So I, and you, so you can see how I make it. I, it's just started. My kids say it's got a beaver tail on it, but I'm, it's on the early stages. But you know, having that thing climbing up the tree might be kind of cool. I don't know. I need to stop. I know. Um, but anyway, if you want to come by and visit sometime, I'm usually in my workshop messing around on Saturdays. Um, I have a skateboard bowl there as well. You can come over and ride. Um, or ask me any questions you want about what the heck I'm up to. At the end of the day, basically my point is I'm okay with that. So thank you very much. So much. Um,